Hey guys, Alton here, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel and also to episode two of our Ethical Hacking for Beginner series. In this episode, it's going to be short and sweet. We're just going to do a high level overview of the general pen testing methodology. So I want to give you guys just a very high level perspective overview of what the entire methodology is from a very generalized perspective to help you to understand how you get from the very beginning of a pen test to the very end. So let's go ahead. Let's get to it. Let's jump over to my screen and let's take a look at this methodology. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into it. So this video is gonna be short and sweet compared to episode one where we set up our virtual hacking lab. This video is just gonna be a high level overview of a generalized pen testing methodology. And I've also included some of the more popular pen testing methodologies for you to do your own research on your own. So let's go ahead, let's get into it. Let's take a look at my screen and let's talk about this. So the pen testing methodology you can think of it as, for those of you that come from a project management perspective, you can think of it as a waterfall methodology. For those of you that don't come from project management, waterfall means you go from one step and then you go to the next, you go to the next phase, and you just continually go down. So it's like a waterfall. So you start at number one, then you go to two, then you go to three, and so forth. And really, that's how I want to look at this. Um, you can think of this as a waterfall combined with a cyclical process, which you'll see in here. So talking about the generalized methodology that you see on the screen, at the very beginning, we start with what is called either the pre-engagement or the engagement phase. And let's say that you are a consulting firm, you're going to a company, and they're interested in potentially having you perform a vulnerability assessment or a pen testing engagement on their network. Well, this is when you sit down with them and you talk about all the specifics, what they want you to do, meaning what's within the scope, what they don't want you to touch. Potentially there are production servers that are very sensitive. They don't want you to take those offline. Or maybe you can only touch those servers and you can't do brute force attacks. You can't do very intensive vulnerability scans. You can't look to exploit them. Uh, there are certain things that may be within scope that you can do and other things that they said, no, you can't do. Um, all those different things are gonna be part of the pre-engagement. Things such as non-disclosure agreements where you have to sign off and say, well, I will not disclose any of the information I learn about your company and your network to anybody. Um, what they're gonna tell you, what they're not gonna tell you. So when it comes to vulnerability assessments and pen testing engagements, it can be anywhere from a white box to a black box. And white box is where they give you pretty much the blueprints and all the details of their network. Gray box is where they may give you some of the details and black box is where they don't give you any details whatsoever. So all that is gonna be defined within the pre-engagement. Um, things such as the timing, saying, well, you can only be on our network at night because we don't want you to, to be overloading our networking systems during the day when we're working or, or vice versa. Uh, we want you to do social engineering or we don't want you to do social engineering or we only want you to do phishing attacks, so forth. All that stuff is gonna be defined within here. And then once everything is looked over by lawyers and so forth and signed, then we get to move on to the technical fun stuff. And that really is information gathering and on. So let's talk about info gathering. So talking about information gathering, we can think of this as passive reconnaissance where we're looking to find out as much as we can about an organization. If it's not a white box pen test or vulnerability assessment, they don't give us a lot of details. We have to learn about the organization ourselves. So maybe we go out to Google, maybe we read brochures on them, whatever is available, we learn about the organization and the folks within that organization, potentially their network as well. Um, think of this as passive reconnaissance because we're not yet really actually touching their network. When we move on to the next step, which is called fingerprinting and scanning, think of this as active reconnaissance. This is where we're starting to scan the system. We're looking at it, we're doing things such as port scans, we're scanning the network, we're using tools such as Nmap, and we're learning about the network and the systems and what's on them, um, what ports are open, what the operating systems are, 
uh, the makeup of the network or multiple networks. So what are the subnets and so forth and, and what are the addressing schemas, all that information. Then we take all this combined in the info gathering, so the passive reconnaissance and then the active reconnaissance in the fingerprinting and scanning, and then we start doing all vulnerability assessments. And this can either be automated or it can be manual. So one of the more popular automated vulnerability assessment tools that we'll take a look at in this series is Nessus. So we can take the information that we learned in here and we can start doing automated vulnerability assessments or we can do them manually as well. So we can take the information that we found in the info gathering and fingerprinting and scanning and we can go out to specific websites and look for vulnerabilities that we can look to exploit as well. So once we've gotten to this phase, once we've finished finding vulnerabilities that we think that we can potentially exploit, well, what do we do next? Well, we move on to exploitation. And just like vulnerability assessments, this can either be manual or automated. So if you go out to the specific websites and there are vulnerabilities, some of them will give you the code that you can use and you can modify to manually try to exploit systems or you can use frameworks. One of the most popular ones out available is a Metasploit framework. And we'll take a look at that in this series as well. So we'll look to exploit a target system. And if the exploitation is not successful, well, then we start over and we go through the cyclical process until we find an exploit that works. Once we find an exploit that works, well, then we move on to the next step. And that is our post exploitation. And so, What's the difference between exploitation and post-exploitation? Well, exploitation is essentially, well, you know what? We're able to exploit and break into a system. Beyond that is post-exploitation. Are we able to pivot from one system to another or multiple other systems? Are we able to escalate our privileges up to get access to sensitive data? Are we able to get access from one network to another network and so forth? That is what the post-exploitation phase is, where we're taking the exploit, breaking in the system, and seeing what else we can get into, what other information we can get, if we can escalate privileges, if we can jump from one network to another, if we can get onto other systems and servers, that's where post-exploitation is. So we don't stop just at that one, we continue on. Then once we've gone through this entire process, and we'll really, we'll start at info gathering down to post-exploitation, once we've done that for the entire scope of the engagement, meaning let's say that they told us we only want to, they only want us to do the pen testing engagement on the servers, uh, they don't want us to touch the client systems, the end user systems. Well, once we've gone through all those servers on that network and we've exploited as many systems as possible, we've found as many vulnerabilities as possible, we've taught, we've found potential ways to pivot from one system to the next or escalate privileges to another, we have identified sensitive data, then we take all of our findings and we put them together into a report that we deliver. And this really is the most important part because this is all fine and dandy doing all of this and exploiting systems finding vulnerabilities and so forth but if we're not able to put it into report with recommendations to the organization then there really isn't much value in this so the goal is to identify the, all the vulnerabilities all of the exploits um, everything we're able to do and then the recommendations to remedy all that goes into a report that we give to them so that's the very high level, I'd say 10,000 foot view perspective of a pen testing methodology. Now I have put some of the more common ones down here at the bottom of the screen. Hopefully this one up here looks familiar. Hopefully you are familiarized with this acronym already because one of our systems is an OWASP system. It is the broken web apps system that we installed. It's um, a virtual machines that they put together that has multiple different web apps that are purposefully vulnerable to exploits so we can break into them and we can practice breaking into them. So this stands for, and let me get rid of all the highlighting, this stands for the Open Web Application Security Project. Um, people that work in government 
are probably familiar with NIST. It stands for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They put together all the recommendations and standards that federal governments in the United States, and I should say the federal government, not federal governments, but the federal government and potentially state governments in the United States, they look to follow. Uh, there are two other ones that I've identified. I'm actually not familiar with these yet, being new to this. Um, one of them is the Open Source Security Testing Methodology Manual. And the other one is a penetration testing methodologies and standards. So I would encourage you to take a look at these on your own if this is something that you're looking to get into. Uh, I imagine as I get further and further along in my studies, I'm going to be exposed to these more and more than I currently have been, and that's the goal. Um, but anyways, that's going to conclude this video. So like I said, I just wanted to introduce you to a pen testing methodology, a generalized pen testing methodology from a 10,000 foot perspective view. So hopefully you found this valuable and enjoyable and you learned something. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys at future videos. Take care.